All right, that's who we're working with here. Oh, Mr. Capture Card. I need you to work. I need to play Pokemans on my stream. Let me try it again. Try it in here. Oh, that's why. Hmm. There we go. Sorry, some uh, slight technical difficulties there. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is El Pikachon. No, twitch.tv slash El Pikachon. My name is Rodrigo. Uh, I suppose I am the eponymous El Pikachon. Um, this is my uh, this is wait, uh, this is my sidekick, Smokey the Smoke Detector. Um, and yeah, we're uh, we're playing Poison Poison Pokemon Team. So this is our run where all the Pokemon on our team are poison types and we're not allowed to have anything that's not a poison type. So we've made it to, what's the city called? Ballon Lee? No. Yeah, Ballon Lee. Um, it's good times. Um, Sinjadil says, you're poison. You're poison running through my, but yes. Just can't sing it because uh, we'd get sued. So let's let's look around Ballon Lee before we go into the into the gym. Frank, that's my granddaddy's name. Uh oh, you guys remember this? You guys remember this? I'm a Pokemon. Have a oh no, that's not it. Oh, uh, this is the guy who wants to be a Pokemon. Scorbunny and Sizzlypeed are different species, but they're still both Pokemon. Scorbunny and I are different species, just like Sizzlypeed and I are different too. If you think about it that way, there's no problem with calling me a Pokemon. I don't mind. What? You don't have to worry about me. Even I know it's pretty lofty logic. I, I wanted to become a Pokemon once. Hey, I've got it. A change of fashion style could change the way I feel too. Basically, if I can make myself feel the way a Pokemon does, it'd be like I became a Pokemon. Don't you think? Would you please put on some clothes with a fiery spirit that embodies my burning feelings? Uh, maybe later. Fiery spirit. Do I have to change into the fire type uniform? I guess we could just go do that real quick. Since we can fast travel. Hola, hola. ¿Qué tal? Um, let's go here. I forgot about this, like, change your clothes mission. I don't know what that guy gives you, but I hope it's something decent. Because Petunia has a very specific style. And being seen in fire type clothes is not gonna not gonna be good for her personality or not her, for her uh, popularity. Bam! There you go. We'll try that. See if the guy likes it. No, don't update the leak card. Petruna be uh, betraying her poison type fashion sense. Yeah, well, she's doing it to help that big weirdo. So, hopefully, something good comes of it. it that guy's really weird. He's like, oh, I'm a little Pokemon. I'm a Pokemon. It's like, hey, little girl, why don't you change your clothes? Oh, that's the wrong town. It's probably very offensive that I get Stow on side and Ballon Lee confused.
If there's one thing that Petunia likes more than poison, it's helping out some weirdos. Yeah, she really does. She's got a soft spot for weirdos. Which is probably why she's a poison type trainer to begin with. Show me some clothes with a fire type design. Okay, well, this is literally the fire type uniform, so I'm going to have to go online and look up what this weirdo wants. Let's go back and change again. Hi, if you're just joining us, fashion is a very important part of this run, so um, it's important to, to get Petunia back in her proper clothes because otherwise she'll get psyched out for the gym battle. That's the wrong place. Okay. Uh, now we're going to have to reconstruct her outfit. Um, let's see what we have as far as... Bottoms. Could go back to her mini skirt. These were fine. These are pretty neutral. Normal tra type tracky bottoms are fine. Well, let's go back to our mini skirt. Uh, so that's purple. So let's. Oh, God. Uh, let's do purple top. Does she have a yellow hoodie? Yeah. Yeah, this is the way she looks like she's wearing like a little tennis outfit. Uh, this is the world's first fashion lock? Yeah. Poke fashion is very important. Singjw says, I've spent a long time farming transmog in WoW, so I'm a I'm with you 100%. Yeah. Uh, I bet the fashion weirdo is named Mugatu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Socks. I don't think we've bought any particularly good socks. Oh, we got yellow socks at least. And then, that's a problem. Like in this game, like poison is like purple and green. Even though, like, I don't know any poison types that are purple and green. Um, it's like there are green poison types, but they're usually not accented with purple. So, it's gonna go have to go back to her boots. You can't wear this item with the way your hair is styled now. That's how you know it's a good haircut. Uh, let's see. There's like a... Grass type, fire type, poison type. That's good. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Back in fashion. We have regained our style. Yep. Horse Point Man says, I love it when my hair is an obstacle. Well, Petunia's hair is definitely an obstacle to her opponents. They look at it and they say, what's going on there? What's this lady's problem? Okay. A couple of fashion detours, but it's to be expected, right? Uh, let's... Go. So, so okay, so this little kid is like, oh, that's my grandpa name. Opal's Gym Stadium is also a small theater. Oh. Oh, that's the same girl. You tell me something. Okay, thank you. What are you doing in my house? No, okay, let's see. You're looking for Frank? That'd be me, yes. What's this? You've got a letter addressed to me? Now, who could be sending me letters? Hawaii, it says it's from Paula. That does take me back ages. Paula was the name of a girl I spent all my time playing with when I was a young lad. She fell ill, didn't tell me though. She kept it a secret just how sick she was. We ended up having a great row about it, then I moved away not long after that fight. I never, or a row? That's like a fight, right? 
Then I moved away not long after the fight. I never met her again after the day I left. How was she? Did she look well? Dear old Paula. Uh... What? The quiet time, are you? May I cut your tongue? I reckon I ought to give you something for this gift you've brought. For you've brought me back a piece of my youth. Whoa, nice. Item to be held by a Pokemon. This curious scarf boost, boosts speed, but only allows the use of one move. Choice scarf is very strong. It's a very strong item. Okay. Alright, so you guys remember that, right? In Hammerlock, I want to say, we met this little girl and she gave us that letter. And, or she gave Petunia that letter. And it turns out this little girl was a ghost. Or a... Uh, Zoroark playing a trick on somebody. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. That's what I thought. I've heard... You guys know that show, As Time Goes By? It's like a very old show. It has like Judy Dench in it. I know it because we used to air it on PBS. Like PBS, oh, like, PBS airs a lot of British television. That, you know, maybe not necessarily has any sort of educational value, but because it's from a different country, they're like, they get away with it. They're like, oh, look, you know, it's like, uh, this is a different culture. You guys can learn about it. And it's really just a way to get like British sitcoms and TV shows aired in the U.S. PBS was the one that originally aired Doctor Who in the U.S. You'd probably know your way around a TM like this one, the, like this one in that case. Oh, a TM. The attack moves power is double if the user has been hurt by the opponent in the same turn. It's good for my slow Pokemon. Having your Pokemon learn moves of different types can be a real help, you know? Uh, BBC probably. Yeah. If a Pokemon evolves, it'll get stronger, but its appearance will change. Do you want to know how to make your Pokemon strong without it evolving? Yes. Okay, I'll teach you what battling. Let's have a Pokemon battle. Oh, no. Oh, is she going to use, like, dire hits and stuff? Oh, no, a Psychic type, I think. Oh, well. I got my anti-psychic type up front. Uh, let's Night Slash it. Are you okay? What are you trying to show me here, lady? Even though my Doddler hasn't evolved yet, it was hard to take down, wasn't it? I mean, it didn't go down in one hit like a chump, but yeah. Oh, the Eviolite. Yeah, Eviolite is good too. Wow. I can't believe like you come to Balanly and you get the Choice Scarf and Eviolite all in like one go. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's the other thing is like this guy who wants to be a poke uh, like a pokemon it's like people do turn into pokemon when they die right it's like ghastly and yamask and all of those guys like used to be people uh, horse pawn mine says i remember seeing someone play with an eviolite gold bat back in the day and it was weirdly good eviolite is very strong it like it really amps up a Pokemon's um, defense and special defense if they haven't evolved. 
one of like the like championship Eviolite holders is uh, now I need to look up. It's Duskull's like me medium evolution. I forget what it's called. Chansey is good with it too. Yep, yep. Uh, Dusclops. So Dusclops already has a huge, like an absolutely huge uh, defense and special defense and hit points. Um, yeah, and that's the same reason why Chansey is good, right? It's because middle Pokemon that are already really tough just become incredibly tough with the Eviolite. Uh, Dosnor and Blissey just get outclassed by their pre-evolutions. Yeah, and it's because of the Eviolite. Um, but, you know, I like that. I wish... I kind of wish that there was an item that was like the Eviolite, but for... Um, for attacks. I mean, maybe that would be a little too much. Um, but... I don't know. I just like... I wish there were more ways to make more Pokemon more viable. You know what I mean? Like, there are so many Pokemon whose stats are just like so-so. And it's like, maybe they have good moves or a good ability, but their stats are not as good. Or, you know, it's like, for a Pokemon to make it in competitive, they have to have good stats, a good ability, and some sort of thing. Like, some sort of, like, some moves or whatever that make them good. Um, and it's like most po most Pokemon have one or two of those things, but rarely all three. Um, so that's that's why stuff like the Eviolite is nice, is because yeah, then you get to see some uh, some Chanseys instead of Blizzies, right? Um, Horse Point Man says I run a Dusclops in my post game Sword team, and it's just untouchable. Yeah, totally. Uh, Soyo K says, especially because middle evolutions are always overlooked. It's cool that they made an item that made them, that made some of them relevant. Yeah, I, in my other game, um, that's why I like abilities like huge power and pure power. Yeah, totally. Um, in my, oops, I gotta go all the way back around. In my sword game, I, you know, for raids, I run a Torah Cat. I can't believe I just did that again. In my sword team for raids, I run a Tora Cat, uh, and I do have an Incineroar, and I play that too sometimes. But the Eviolite, because uh, starters have such good stats, you know, it's not a like Tora Cat is not necessarily a competitive level Pokemon, but it's just fine for raids. Uh, I need to check check my Pokey, see what I have. Um. And because of that, I can just slap the Eviolite on and it does just fine, right? Even in five-star raids, it's perfectly reasonable. 40, 38, 29, 35, 37, 39. Um... Okay, first off, let's move these guys out of the bench. They are not supposed to be here. Boop, 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 boop. You guys remember the trick? Got a box list, and you drop them in, and it auto sorts them into the open spaces. It's pretty good. Pokemon hack right there. Yeah, there's a few abilities, um, like huge power or like big pecs or whatever that can get you a, a middle evolution that can like survive but it's it's pretty rare um, I wish that there was more like that there were just like tournaments that used special rules but the problem with that is that I, I think for special rules tournaments the pod has to be really big otherwise people won't care okay so it's like a lot of psychic types oh no it's like but, but some of these are going to be psychic types. So... I guess we'll keep Dr. Violet up front. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll have Dr. Violet lead. Yeah, so some special rule stuff would be cool, like um, only middle evolutions allowed in the tournament. Definitely more like no legendaries, please. Like legendary Pokemon because their stats are so big. Like this is my my always rant. Like because legendary Pokemon's stats are so good, it's like they rule out like like 90% of all Pokemon because they just push the bar up so high as far as stats. It's like when Sword and Shield first started, it's like you would see teams with like. Moranies or whatever that Pokemon's name is, and with like, um, yeah, just like, uh, um, a like Hatterene, is it Hatterene? Whatever the, the final evolution of that is, like, Trick Room team, but it's like now those Pokemon have been outclassed, right? It's like you can have a, like an Indeedy whose stats are like better and it does that like um, field change when it enters the the fight um, I don't know I, I, I just yeah I wish there was like more special rule stuff uh, Sinjadol says the three legendary birds are the only three Pokemon I could remember used to annoy the kids yeah no that's good um, a lot of legendary Pokemon aren't that interesting Anyway, let's get let's 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 focus on what Petunia is doing. You got your gym badges already. I'm going to have to watch out for you, huh? Ooh, rah rah rah. Look, even more Pico is wary of you. Wait, more Pico, don't tell me you actually like Petunia. Ugh. We've already had a serious battle with her. She's an opposing gym challenger. Guess there's nothing to it. Look, just take one of my Lee cards, okay? Oh, Marnie's Lee card. What's with that look, huh? This just means I'll think of you as my rival from now on, okay? There aren't too many gym challengers left, you know? So we're meeting in the finals. You got that? Oh, that's nice. Marnie, you're nice. I did not mean to walk out of the building. I like Morpico a lot. Um, I thought I thought he was too gimmicky at first, but it's fine. Let me talk to the ball guy. Thanks for rolling by to have a chat with your mate, the ball guy. Is love in the air, or is it just this Pokeball? Here, try it out and see for yourself. Oh, a love ball. Works best when catching a Pokemon that is of the opposite gender of your Pokemon. Just full of surprises. Hui, 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 hui. Okay. Let's save. Yeah, this, this gym has, like, quizzes. And I do not remember any of them at all. So we'll see. I love to see compulsive heterosexuality in my Pokemon games. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, hopefully, I mean, now that uh, the like beginning screen is like is not like, are you a boy or a girl? It's like, what do you look like? And it just shows you a bunch of faces. Uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll follow that and they'll like discontinue the love ball. Here we go. Fairy type gym. Ah, there you are, my dear gym challenger. Though you really are lacking in the color pink. See, I'm well. I, you forced me to wear this uniform. See, I'm looking for a successor to take on the role of gym leader here. So my gym mission serves as an audition of sorts too. Oh, don't worry, it's simple enough. 
All you need to do is battle my trainers and answer the questions they ask along the way. Think carefully before answering though, child. If you get the wrong answer, the stats of your Pokemon will get lowered. That's fun. That, that's actually fun. Um, but if you answer correctly, your Pokemon will get a stat boost. Just think of it as a little fairy type Pokemon magic to make things interesting. And I want you to go all out, show me what you can do. Okay. Let's uh, let's actually switch out Dr. Violet. We'll swap her out for... Yeah, I'll swap her out for Oakley. It's Poison Psychic, so that should, that should be okay against mostly Fairy types. Does it have an item? Yep. Did you need something? Uh, never mind. I'm good to go. Thank you. This is cute. Alright, okay, it's time to start your audition to see if you're worthy of becoming the Fairy-type Gym Leader. You're challenged by Gym Trainer Annette. Sent out Spritzy! Alright, Oakley. Time to... Destroy. Oh, well, that Spritzy must be really slow if, uh, if my Slowbro beat her without using his, uh, gun ability. Luxury Ball is classism. I, I think the Luxury Ball is okay. I won't switch. Slurpuff. I actually like Slurpuff. A lot of people are like, oh, it's so stupid or whatever. Uh, do you know about fairy types weaknesses? Yeah. That's nice that the first time around they give you like two options that can't be wrong. <laughs> Kaplow. Oh, my robot quote didn't work. Okay. Well, that seems to work for some reason. Oki wants to learn the move Psychic. Yeah. Psychic is good. I'll replace confusion with psychic. Hey, it's me. Yeah, it's you. There's only like three quotes so far, so if people do the quote command, that's that one's definitely gonna come up. All right. You defeated a net. You stand your ground with everything you got. It doesn't matter what's right or wrong. It doesn't? I see. I can't say that Miss Opal will think. I can't say what Miss Opal will think, but you're at least piqued my interest. Oh, thanks, Annette. Hey, Annette, did you forget something? Oh, that's the second trainer. So, in Pokemon, right, they, like, reuse... <laughs> uh, types a lot, so it's like this lady is like the exact same lady, but I like to think that it is in fact the exact same lady, but because this is a play or an audition, she's actually playing a different character, right? So yeah, this works, Pokemon. Good job. Gym trainer, Teresa. 
Swirlix. Yeah, so I do like uh, Swirlix and its evolution, but I'm uh, I'm like just kind of fundamentally annoyed at Pokemon that I have to trade to evolve. Um, because for the majority of my Pokemon playing time, I didn't have somebody to trade with, so it was like either I had to like not trade, or I had to be like find like one of my friends and be like can you can I just borrow your like your game and your like DS so that I can trade um, now that I uh, like for a while it was nice because I could trade with my wife because she had her own DS and we would buy like each version but now that we have only one switch I've gone back to like not really been able to, to like sort of cheat that trade uh, let's keep the current Pokemon. Aromatease. Don't love Aromatease. What was the previous trainer's name? Annette. I'm pretty sure if that was a question the first time I played, I'm pretty sure I like would have messed that up if not for the fact that it's actually super easy. She's just the intern they have reading the sides. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like... It's like, I find it hard to connect with... With Teresa. I don't know. I don't know what her motivation is. Don't worry about it. Right or wrong, just keep moving forward. Again, don't think that's good advice. I don't think right or wrong, keep doing it. That's just not good advice. Next, I think you might have what it takes to become the fairy type gym leader. Theodora. Morgram. Okay, Morgram's a dark type. Um, but shell sidearm should still do it. Kaboom! Uh, Horse Point Mine says, My friend and I did a little competition back when the Gen 1 games were on Virtual Console, and I managed to find another person to help me evolve my Alakazam, and my friend was totally taken off guard. It felt like my most anime Pokemon experience. Oh yeah, your friend was like, uh, huh, uh, uh, How is it possible? And Alakazam can only evolve through trade. No way. Uh, so okay says, Morgrim looks like a character Rob would play in Critical Hit. <laughs> yeah, he actually kind of does. I don't know if you guys are, have listened to the... Um, to the uh, Sentinels. Yeah. Yeah, to the Sentinels RPG stuff we've been doing. But yeah, definitely. Uh, Senja W says, you should totally make it super effective, a quote. I mean, I could. Let's see. It's a... Uh, add quote, right? It's... It's super effective. Uh, so you okay says I'm in oh uh, horse point mine says I'm loving the new Sentinels run good I'm glad uh, so you okay says I'm in the middle of drifters at the moment yeah so um, that's good I guess I probably shouldn't spoil anything yep that's another good one uh, what do you think of the Sentinels RPG I'm thinking of running a young slash sidekick superhero game and torn between it and mass because played by the apocalypse is a bit hit or miss i agree that 
Powered by the Apocalypse is, is its own thing. Um, I like it a lot. I like the Sentinels game a lot, actually. I'd be... I would probably be happy to run it as a system. Um, because it's pretty good at what it's trying to do. Um, but it has some issues. It, like, really doesn't have too much of, like, a skill... Res or, like like non-combat resolution system um, so that's something that you have to go in realizing uh, Scotty Mo 42 says still slowly making my way through at 342 Void Saga season 5 episode 35 yeah well that's coming along Void Saga's good times uh, Oakley grew to level 37 Crud Papers grew to level 31 don't worry, card papers, you'll catch up. Well, veggies grew to level 40. Uh, Horse Point Man says, I'm a big Powered by the Apocalypse fan, though I can totally see and understand people's problems with it. That being said, I think Masks is among uh, the best Powered by the Apocalypse games for people who don't play a lot of those games. I would agree. Um, Masks is good. It's just like... It, like, okay, if you're playing Sentinels RPG, you're going to be playing very much a a game that's, like, where, like, superheroes are superheroes and you're flying around and punching things and doing all kinds of cool stuff. Um, if you're playing Masks, that's about the characters, right? Who are these people? Who do they care about? What are their problems? That's, that's what Masks gets into. Masks is, like, much more of a... Um, much more of a character game than than sentinels not that you can't do character stuff in sentinels but masks specifically has mechanical hooks for that uh sinjado says releasing to void saga episode 333 that's pretty good gardevoir that's very psychic so yeah let's get dr violet in here should have really actually really should have brought um our uh venipede or scolipede question why do i eat for breakfast every morning oh uh, well that's my own fault i guess uh let's see let's Let's go with a sucker punch. Yeah. Oh, hang in there, Dr. Violet. Let's hit it with a night slash. Yeah. Fairy cakes? Yeah, probably. Uh, oh, Sargassum grew to level 39. I play a strong trainer. I'm a method actor, so I became a trainer in real life, too. I'm loving it. I used to do theater in high school. I'm, I am I love all this theater stuff. We should be focusing on the gym challenge, but Miss Opal insisted on making this an audition. Oh, no. She's resentful. All right. Let's see what this guy says. You have successfully completed the gym mission. Now I wonder if you've met the standards of the gym leader. Would you like to immediately challenge the gym leader challenger? Oh, would you like to immediately challenge the gym leader challenger Betunia? No, not yet. I need to. Yeah. Definitely need to do that save and then I probably need to heal up a little bit. Is this something? There are scores for the gym mission. Leon, fail. Number of correct answers, one. Your talent in Pokemon battles is beyond anything I've ever seen, but you're rather hard to read. Sonia, fail. Number of correct answers, three. You have, a, you have talent. 
that's for sure but give up but you give up a little too quickly then again i imagine it's not easy being a granddaughter of magnolia oh wow these are that's like those are old notes <laughs> what the heck um i really expect that they're like marnie and hop to be on there Drink some moo moo milk. There we go. Actually, let me see if I have any level up candy. Have some rare candy. Uh, yeah, let's use all nine on card papers. Let's see if that gets her, gets her to fighting shape. Poison gas, insurance, sludge, self-destruct. I do kind of like having a Pokemon with self-destruct. I think it's funny. Yeah, actually, poison gas doesn't. Uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll just replace sludge with sludge bomb. Uh, Scotty Mo says, "What shows were you in?" Uh, I was. Let's see, what shows did I do in high school? Um, I did. Um, a show called The Man Who Came to Dinner, um, which I don't think it's very well known, but I think in like theater, like high school theater circles, it is. Um, I played the butler, not a very big part. That was like my s freshman or sophomore year. Um, I was in uh, The Glass Menagerie and I played Tom. Um, I was in A Midsummer Night's Dream and I played Oberon. Um, if you can believe it. Um, and I was in... Um, I w we also did Schoolhouse Rock, the musical. And I played, like, the teacher guy. Because that's the person who sings the least. Because I wasn't a very good singer. Um, I, and, I'm, I, and still, I'm not. Like, basically, the notes every night from my... From our drama professor or teacher were, like... Rodrigo, don't sing so loud. You're pulling the whole cast. So yeah, basically I'd sing out of tune really loudly and like pull the whole cast into wherever, whatever weird half note I was in. It was great. So yeah, I had to sing lower and try to try to keep my pitch, which was difficult for me. But yeah, high school theater was fun. I wish I'd done more theater afterwards, but it just kind of didn't work out. Like my schedule was too erratic when I got out of school and started working. Um... Uh, yep, that's right, Scotty. My first Lord of the Fae. I, I was, in fact... I, we, we got a lot of mileage out of the fact that I was the king of the fairies. Um, it, it, was, it was good times. Sakurat says, We've just started a comedy rendition of the 39 Steps with our college crew. That's cool. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, theater's fun. Once learn toxic. Uh, yeah. It's toxic. Yeah. Toxic is like poison gas, but better. Uh, College Theater is great because there are fewer musicals. Yeah, I, I guess you probably get like more of a choice there. Um, I, I basically didn't do any theater in college and actually that's not true. I like I co-directed a uh, I co-directed Godspell. It uh, it was a little rough, honestly. The director wasn't like didn't have a very strong hand, so I think some of it got away from us and then we didn't have enough musicians, so 
at some point I had I, I started playing the drums for it so it was lots of fun for me because Godspells are really bop and musical so I was like bap, 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 you know and so I like I was like okay well the acting's okay it's gonna be fine but uh, at least I get to jam on the drums also like the director like the music director of the play was like uh, you need to play a little softer and I was like right sorry just got just got into the spirit man uh, Horse Point Man says, I've seen that comedy 39 Steps. It's so funny. Uh, oh, yeah. Does Sakurats have an extended bit about a man catching butterflies? Belch. Ooh. Oh, I, it needs to have eaten a berry. No. Up oh, here we go. Wasn't long before we got crud papers to evolve. See, crud papers could potentially be pretty strong in this uh, in this gym battle. Crud papers evolved into wheezing, and it's a Galarian wheezing, so it's uh, fairy type. Weezing. Long ago, during a time when droves of factories fouled the air with pollution, Weezing changed into this form for some reason. Oh, thanks. It wants to learn double hit. User slams the target with a long tail vines or a tentacle. The target is hit twice in a row. Uh, I want to see no. Really wanted to learn a fairy type move. Uh, probably it like and crud papers might actually be me mishearing crud vapors I like I, I heard that in, in Freakazoid there was like this Scottish guy I want to say it's like this smells like crud papers but maybe he was saying crud vapors and I just thought he was saying crud papers Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I don't know why the quote bot isn't working for, for Streamlabs, but we'll figure it out. Here we go. I suppose it's a bit late to introduce myself, but I'm Opal, the gym leader. I've gotten a good look at how you handle those quizzes. The last part of the mission is me. Let me have a look at how you and your partner Pokemon behave. Yeah, the cop asks him what they call Pugas in Scotland. He says crud vapors. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I thought he was saying crud papers. So that's funny. It's, you know, it's great and it's wrong. Uh, you're challenged by Gym Leader Opal. Oh, wheezing. Okay, so this is actually really helpful because uh, Oakley is psychic, so... Let's hit him with a psychic attack. Let There we go. Yeah, no, that's that's funny that this whole time I thought he was saying crud paper. See, that's why I turn on the closed captioning. But back in the 90s, we didn't have closed captioning. So, um, well, there was, but it was more difficult to put on your TV. Crud vapors would also be a much better name for a wheezing. But what are you going to do? Uh, Opal is about to send out Mowile. Mowile is a steel type. Uh, yeah, let's switch Pokemon. 
Uh, it's gonna resist fighting, so let's try water. Scotty Mo says Freakazoid is one of my favorites. Yeah, Freakazoid's great. Big fan of Freakazoid. Oh, you scared him. Oh, no. More questions? Do you know my nickname? Uh, I'm going to say the wizard. Whew. Okay. Uh, let's. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go down with a single water pulse, so let's use double team. Let's see if we can't prolong this fight a little bit. Stop dropping my stats. Let's see if we can knock him out with this. Probably not, because it used iron defense. It's probably... Oh, no, it did. Okay, nice. All right. Here probably comes the G-Max Pokemon. Oh, maybe not. Togekiss is flying and fairy. Do I have anything that's strong against flying? Mm, I don't think so, but let's give crud papers a spin. Crud papers! What is my favorite color? I'm gonna guess pink. Oh, she likes purple, okay. Did that knock down my special defense? Fantastic. Uh, let's hit him with a toxic. Whew. Let's get him all up poisoned. Yeah, right. What is what is the uh what is the wing speed of an unladen uh, swallow? Um Scotty Mo says, I'm gonna tell my six year old to call toilet paper crud paper. That's what that's what I thought it was. They're like, What do you call poo gas? And I was they're like crud papers and I was like, Oh, that, that must be like a like a reference to toilet paper, right? So that's what I always kind of assumed it was. But yeah, no, I just heard it wrong. Uh, let's hit it with a sludge bomb. Oh, this is gonna hurt. And it's badly poisoned, so... Not quite. Alright, I'm gonna try to self-destruct. But it's probably gonna... Yeah, it's gonna get me first. That's okay. Oh. Nobody gets the XP. Uh, who to put out? Let's go back to... Uh, Oakley. Actually... 
Let's go to Dr. Violet, because I have a sense that um, the Hatterene's coming out. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Well, then this is bad, because this guy's, like, extra bad. Also, I forgot the Dynamax. That's okay. This, uh... This gym, which should have been a cakewalk, is, uh, actually... A little bit tougher than I expected. Also, it's nice that I'm not, like, super over-leveled for it. That's one thing that I've been really trying to avoid. Ah, uh, you lack pink. Here, let us give you some. Oh, I did say cakewalk, didn't I? You're right. Yeah, that, that was that was a pun not intended there. Question: How old am I? Oops. Okay, I think I answered the low answer. All right, let's try to Venom shock it. Just because I don't very often get to do the toxic Venosh. There you go. There we go. Didn't even need to Dynamax. Just toxic follow up with Venoshock. Get a little HP back from your Shell Bell and just call it a day. Ah, oh, level 40. Ooh, is Sargassum actually going to evolve into a dragon now? That'd be good. Um, Acid is 40. Poison Tail is a little bit bigger. I'm going to get rid of... I'm going to get rid of Poison Tail, actually. This is a jam. Little veggies reach level 41. You defeated Gym Leader Opal. Yeah! Ah! Your pink is still lacking, but you're an excellent trainer with some excellent Pokemon. Thanks, you weird old lady. Well, good try. Not bad, not bad at all. Still not what I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be the fairy type trainer. Stop. Like, I don't, I don't want to. Oh, don't worry yourself about it, child. It's just a matter of my preference. I'll find the next gym leader elsewhere. In fact, I've already got an idea about where to look. In jail. Where beat is. Too bad about the audition, but here's a fairy badge for your efforts. Doop de dee doop boop 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 Skapank You can now catch Pokemon of level up to level 45. Uh, take this TM with you too, a little bonus from this old lady. Draining Kiss. Oh that's a good one. I wonder if any of my guys can learn Draining Kiss. Lastly, here's a little something for humoring me. This might help add a little more pink to you. Fairy uniform. Yeah, I like the fairy uniform. Like, pink and pastel blue is, is a cool combination. Um, of course, it's not good to neglect your elders, but old folk like me should also know when it's time to step out of the spotlight. The next gym awaits you in Sir Chester. Sir Chester. <gasps> Guys. Guys, there's a fashion, there's a boutique in Sir Chester. She looks like a Miyazaki witch. She, I am, I am certain her opal's design is based on the triplets of Belleville. Let me 
me see if I can find a good image of them. Right? It's like this, like this character is just clearly Opal. Uh, Scotty Moe says, yes, I still get the bar that Barber song stuck in my head. Yeah, all of the all the songs in the Triplets of Belleville are really catchy. Um, God, like such weird character design. If you if you guys haven't seen the Triplets of Belleville, you should. It's <laughs> it's overwhelmingly weird but it's good it's a good movie i i enjoy it a lot i think i used to have it in on dvd but i don't know if i still do uh let's see back to the capture card here we go so yeah that's that's basically who opal is based on i have zero doubt uh opal says hold on now nah. Uh, St. J. W. says, never heard of it before. What kind of thing is it? So, uh, The Triples of Belleville is a... Um, it's a French movie about... Like, it's a French movie about a woman trying to find her son who has been kidnapped. Like, that's actually the plot of it. But she runs into these singers who used to be really popular. Like, the movie probably takes place in like i don't know the 80s but she runs into the singers who used to be like really big in like the 30s maybe um so and that you know one of them one of them especially looks a lot like what opal looks like um but so so that's the premise a woman is trying to find her kidnapped son um but it's all very weird the reason why the son has been kidnapped is really weird and stupid um how they break him out is pretty stupid like it's i don't know it's not it's not like oh this is so stupid it's just like it's really weird and and out of like out there uh, like literally everything that happens in this movie is like you're like well i guess that's something that could happen given what we know about the universe but it's weird that it did i don't know that's just how i feel about it i like it a lot um it's got it's got some nudity in it um at the beginning because it does a what's her name um so one of the things that it does is at the beginning this isn't too much of a spoiler they show you a like they animate like a, a caricature of like josephine baker right so she's like topless with some bananas i think she might have a top on but i'm pretty sure she's topless they animate like Django Reinhardt. Um, they animate, um, I don't know, a bunch of different people. I, I, I forget them all now. Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird, it's a weird movie. Go check it out. Um, actually, this reminds me that we got into like a big conversation about Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow in the in the MSP, and now I feel like I, I really want to go back and watch it again because I just looked through the um, the art book for it, and it's really fantastic. All right. Let's see what Opal wants. I've got a few errands to run in Hammerlock. Care to join me for the journey? If you're headed to the next gym stadium, you'll need to get to Hammerlock too, after all. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll go to Hammerlock with you. Weird old lady. Always such a dusty town. Though I suppose some Pokemon prefer it that way. Okay. Is there some sort of plot thing here in Hammerlock or... Or she's just like, hey, let's go to Hammerlock. 
guess I should save. Hello, the plot. Where are you? Oh, there's Bead. Standing there like a sad sack. Uh, come to gawk at me now that I've had my challenge ban taken away and my gym challenger status revoked. Can you really afford to waste time like this? Bead. Heh <laughs> no. Petunia's nice. Petunia recognizes that Bead is someone who also cares about fashion. So that's why she's nice to him. She can tell she can tell that, you know, there's some redeeming qualities to Bead. Oh, my camera's like not focusing for some reason. Right? That's like my camera not my eyes. Okay. There we go. It is appropriate for a trainer of your limited talents. I'll have you know, though, that I haven't given up. I must become the champion in order to help out the chairman. I will go and ask him to let me rejoin the gym challenge. That boy. Now that's what I call pink. He's purple, right? Am I wrong about that? So sincere and straightforward, and, you're so <laughs> and yet so twisted and misguided. I like it. That's the kind of thing that gives people some depth. I mean, we've discussed how, like, Bead has a lot more depth than the protagonist. Time for my gym mission, child. Oh, uh? oh God, she's going to kidnap. <laughs> she's going to kidnap him. Pink. Pink. And pink. Congratulations, child. Uh, Miss Opal, what in the world has gotten into you? You were used by Oleana, am I right? You worked hard to gather the wishing stars for her, only to have her throw you away like rubbish once she was done with you. Yeah, definitely, right? It's like we're lo it's very clear that like Bead was made to take a fall for the company. Uh, come with me, child. I might be able to help you out. Of course, it all depends on how much hard work you're willing to put in, too. Are you testing me? Very well, I accept. In fact, I plan on making sure you see my full talents and tell me everything you know about the Wishing Stars. What do you know about the Wishing Stars? Farewell for now, child. You should head to Sir Chester. I take it you know how to get to Route 7? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll figure it out. Have fun, Bead. Aw. Bead's finding his way in the world. Yeah, I don't know why the Streamlabs quote thing doesn't work. I have to look into it. Other stuff works, right? Yeah, okay. I'll take your Pokemon for a few seconds then. Beep, 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 beep. Alright. What time is it? Three? Let's take a super quick break. And I'll be right back.
All right. I'm back, but I'm still chewing, so I'm going to mute myself a little bit. Hey, it's Sonia. I don't know, but I guess it's one of those dogs that I ran into. <gasps> Kaboom. Maybe we shouldn't build a power plant into a stadium. Smokey the Smoke Detector merch when? Yeah, um, I, sh I should. I should like... That that's what I'll do. It'll be a t-shirt. A white t-shirt. And it'll just be like a tiny circle like up here on the shoulder. I guess up here on the shoulder. And, and you guys will know that that's Smokey. That's right, the power spot detector reacts when it's possible to Dynamax. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Leon. Woo! Uh oh. You just get lost, Leon. I'm going too. I'm really looking forward to seeing you complete compete in the finals. You should leave the investigation on the quaking to the adults. Hit the search tester and get that gym badge. So. <laughs> hop back there like a creeper. So this marks a, a, a big departure from the Pokemon series, right? And I think. I think it's partially. Oh, hey, Skippy, what's up? Caption, there's no smoke. Yeah, that would be good. So this is a big departure from previous Pokemon games where you, as a little child, would take on, like, monsters, like, legit monsters, um, also, like, criminal gangs and stuff. And it's like, here, it's like, oh, no, something has happened. Okay, child, well, you go be safe, okay? Like... People have always made jokes about how, you know, the, the Pokemon protagonist is a 10-year-old child and yet ends up doing all this very dangerous stuff. And it's like, here, they're not doing it, right? They're like, okay, well, the adults are going to go take care of this. Um, so, I don't know. I think it's funny. It's, it's interesting and it's, like, kind of weird. It's like, you want your characters to be involved in this stuff, but they're not letting you, at least at first. Uh, Skippy says, this is the day I do all my errands and always forget to stop by when I'm done. Ah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, whenever you can. Uh, all this stuff that grown people who spend their entire life trying can't figure out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, first that four is, then that mad quiz. I've been lost in every sense of the word. But it looks like I finally caught up to you again. Come with me to Route 7. I could use a bit of competition to motivate me. Okay, well. Should probably move our party around. Anyway. Oh. Um. 
Yeah, one second. I forgot to do one last thing. hot that's uh that's Smokey's friend oh wait which way should I go that's uh that's Smokey's friend thermostaty right there so I have to turn that down a bit uh, let's see I guess I should probably bring my A game against Hop. Thirty seven, forty, thirty-six, thirty-six. Um I definitely want to keep Sargassum against a score bunny. This should be okay. He's got a normal type a lot of the time, so Fighting type is probably good. Has that electric type. Has that pink curtain. So what's your next gym leader milestone? Overthrowing the major league gyms? Yeah, first it's like... Um, first Petunia is going to become champion, right? Then she's going to um, start her own gym and try to move that into the majors. But yeah, first she has to prove that she's the the very best like no one ever was. As it were. Um, let's give something to Crunk Papers. really have anything particularly good to give it. Yeah, we'll just give it a berry. Same thing for little veggies. Not very much, but it's okay. Horse Point in Mind says, I would pay so much money for a Pokemon game that really let me make my own gym. Right? I would totally... I would be so super into that. And it's like, maybe it gives you a chance... Maybe it's like... Yeah, it's either officially a gym or maybe not officially a gym, so you can use whatever Pokemon you want. Um, but yeah, then that would allow you to be like, yeah, I want to be a Poison-type gym or a Dark-type gym or whatever. Yeah, it would be great. And Pokemon... Pokemon is a flexible enough franchise, believe it or not, that they can do that, right? If they can do... If they can do Mystery Dungeon, they can do something like that. Uh, I can't believe that wasn't the goal of PLA. We established the first gym in Sinnoh. Um... Yeah, that's well, that's because Pokemon Legends Arceus is like a little farther behind than that, right? It's like Pokeballs had literally just been invented. It's like it's going to be a little while before Jim starts showing up. Like the 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 plot of uh Pokemon Legends Arceus is like let's not get eaten by Pokemon. Mario Maker but Pokemon would just be it for me. I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know that I can even see that. Um, so you'll. Uh, yeah, you have to take. Tell me what you mean by that because it was like it's like level design or like being able to like tweak some Pokemon or whatever. Maybe. Uh, Skippy the Wonder Chicken says I still have too many problems with PLA. It felt unfinished or half baked to me. Oh, I love it. I've been playing it pretty much non-stop. Um, 
tons of stuff to do. I'm I'm a big fan of it, but I mean I get it. Like when I talk, like there's a lot of people that uh, talk to me about um, Pokemon Legends Arceus, and they're like, they're like, would I like it? And I'm like, okay, are you into Pokemon? And sometimes they're like, no, but maybe I could get into them with this. And I'm like, if you're not into Pokemon, this is going to seem like a so-so adventure game. Like, only for people that are very invested in Pokemon does this seem like an absolutely revolutionary game. It is, in fact, just a very normal adventure game that has, like, a quirky battle mechanic that turns it into a turn-based thing. Which, you know... If you played something like Indivisible, right, which was a platformer, but anytime you hit an enemy, it like explodes into a, like a um, an RPG fight. Like, it, you know, it's not the newest thing. It's not it's not actually that different. So I can totally see it when people are like, "Yeah, this isn't it for me." I'm like, "Yeah, no, I get it." Uh, Harvester says, "Hey, Rodrigo, in chat. Happy Wednesday, y'all. Thanks." Now, Horse Point Man says, to be honest, I don't know anything about Mario Maker. I was just imagining a super customizable Pokemon game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like more like base building, I think, would be great. You know, it's like Pokemon has allowed you to have bases before, but they didn't do anything. Like, they, I, I think they literally didn't do anything except you being able to get in there and be like, okay, I'm in my base. I'm, like, decorating it. Okay, bye. So it's like, yeah, if you were able to build your own gym and face challengers and stuff, that would be fun. Um, Life's a Pitch says, running your own gym, but it's a business management sim where you send trainers out to get stronger and have to test them with a really specific gimmick. Yeah, that'd be fun. I, I mean, that sounds fun to me. Skippy says, I'm a huge shiny hunter, so PLA wasn't going to be for me, sadly. Sure, yeah, that's not... Although shinies do seem to come about pretty easily, all things considered. Like, I've caught, like, three shinies without even really trying, so... Um... But yeah, no, definitely, um, like, Pokemon Legends Arceus is not, okay, so, like, Pokemon games like Pokemon Sword, um, are everything, or try to be everything to everyone, right? Uh, what do I mean by that? So, Pokemon games have, um, they have a... Um, well, here, hang on. We'll chat about it for a bit. So, Pokemon games have a... Uh, have lots of different things going on. And if you've played a lot of Pokemon, you might not realize how many things. But, so, first off, they have a single-player campaign, right? Most people, like 90% of the people who play this game, who played Sword and Shield just play through the campaign. And once that's over, they stop playing. Maybe they play a little bit more, catch a few more Pokemon, then they're done, right? It also is a collecting game, right? Which you largely interact with that sort of through the campaign, but it also has its own thing. Basically, all of the side missions in Pokemon are just catching Pokemon that you don't have yet, right? Um, then on top of that, it has the competitive side. And on top of that, like, the collector side expands into shinies um, and, you know, a few other things, like multiple varieties, right? If you want to get every Vivillion or whatever, um, good, good, luck for, good luck with that. Um, especially if you want to get every variety of shiny Vivillion, I suppose. Um, so, uh, a game like Arceus or a game like Let's Go... Right, let's go Pikachu and Eevee. Um, is like deliberately not being everything to everyone. It's like, sorry, we we like you can catch shinies here, but it's gonna be different. Or or this game doesn't have like in Let's Go, you could battle other people, I think. Um, but in Arceus, you can't. There's like no no battling other human players. There's ver there's barely battling any uh, PC, like any uh, computer-based trainers. Uh, let's say, Skippy the Wonder Six says, if it was forty dollars, I think PLA would be brilliant, but it just isn't worth the full AAA game price. I I don't know. I 
like I disagree. Like I'm not I'm not entirely sure what you don't like about it. Um but I'm like if we like I I mean as long as we're going to take a hammer to like everything that Bethesda has ever put out ever, then maybe. If you're like, well Skyrim should have been $25 to begin with because it wasn't finished, then yeah, but uh like you know, Pokemon Arceus had a few glitches, but it's actually like actually a very well put together game considering the stuff that it's asked for them to do. But it's cool. <laughs> like I don't want to get too far into it. Um Fenebrae says got sixty hours out of PLA, so it was worth the price. Now ah, that's a dollar an hour. Um Skippy the Wonder Chicken says the shinies are too easy to get, is what I mean. Okay, I see that. There's no patience or skill to it. I got a full team of six shinies in four hours and just finished the game. I've been hunting in Soul Silver for a year and only have eleven shinies. And you th and that's and that's a good thing, is what you're saying. Um Skippy says, this is why I like this channel. Rodrigo's a very understanding content creator. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I get it. Um, lots of, like, people go into things for lots of different reasons, right? And it's like, Skippy's uh, deal is, is something, right? And you get that. In Sword and Shield, Sword and Shield before Arceus was the easiest way to get shinies. If you, like... Um, yeah, just stop Streamlabs. You're embarrassing yourself. Um, if you knew how to manipulate the system, and usually you had a friend, like you need another person really, to so you can re, like re-trigger the instance, and the other person catches the Pokemon because you basically can't save. Um, yeah. It, it like Sword and Shield was actually an extremely easy way to get shinies. I have tons of shinies in Sword and Shield, and I never had any ever before. Right? It's like like I said, prior to Sword and Shield, I I had run into one shiny. It was a shiny Sor Zorua, and it ran away, so I didn't even get to get to like play it. So, hey, wait a minute. Did my goal get met? Yeah. Oh, my goal got met. Nice. Let's make a new goal. For subscribers. Subscribe to see the vampire. There we go. Thank you for everybody that has followed. I appreciate it. Um, Fenebrae says, if that's how it's pronounced, uh, Fenebrae says, if you know how to manipulate the system, shiny hunting is easy in almost every single Pokemon game. Yeah. There's a difference between difficulty and I don't know. It, it's like what, what Skippy's talking about, about it being like, you know, doing something for four years and getting 11 shinies. Like, I'm, I'm sure Skippy knows how to, how to do this very well. And it's like the game is just like extremely obstinate. Like the game's um, tables are just so huge. Or so, like, the chance is so tiny that it's like, yeah, if you know how to do it, you can do it. But for some games, they give it up super easy. And for other games, they give it up almost never, right? Uh, Skippy says, well, Pokemon games are short, cheap pseudo RPGs, right? They used to be about 35 to $40. For me, shiny hunting is about the adrenaline rush you get when you finally get what you were going for. I get shinies, and it makes the game take more than the six hours most of the games take to bull rush through. Sure. Yeah, I, I I mean I get it, I I understand that. Um, it, it it really says what what it says to me is that like, um, you like your Pokemon experience is very specifically tied around shinies, and the way that we like in the same way that we talked about this, um, 
about how so a, a while ago we we're talking about how there's no point in doing a nuzlocke in um in pokemon legends arceus because the game kind of has a fundamental challenge from the beginning it actually is challenging because your physical body is the thing that gets attacked it changes that dynamic and it makes it more likely to have a blackout um, without you even throwing a single Pokemon, right? Um, so it's like, what are Nuzlockers going to do? It's like, well, if if your uh, if your enjoyment of Pokemon comes exclusively from doing Nuzlocks, then you're going to figure it out. You're going to find a way. But you're, here's already a thing that like. It's like doing Nuzlocke is not what the Pokemon company cares about, right? And shiny hunting is something that lures people in, so they've actually been making it easier and easier. So if what you like is the challenge of the shiny hunt, um, as opposed to just having a bunch of shinies, which is what a lot of people like out of shiny hunting, then you're going to run into... Th then these games are actually going to continue to become less and less palatable for you, because... They're making it easier. They're just 100% making it easier. These games have become like just exponentially less obtuse ever since I would say Sun and she or Sun and Moon. Like Sun and Moon, I think made a real departure where they were like, we are going to make these games like easy to interact with and easier to play with. Let's see what you guys are are, are saying. Uh, where's my mouse? Here we go. Uh, Skippy the Orange is, uh, yep, you already said that. Harvester says, my initial take is that if recent games make shinies more accessible to obtain than older games, and that feels like it devalues the game, the time and energy you spent on previous games shiny hunting, it feels like a prestige-related reaction if the current situation somehow affects your past accomplishments. I mean, Magic the Gathering runs into that all the time, right? Where they're like, oh, you you have these cards and you spend time finding these cards and now we're going to reprint these cards and now everybody's going to have them. It, it's a thing. Yeah, it's like that that scarcity was something that made you special and now it's less special. Uh, Horse Point Mine, Pond Mine says, I've noticed that my Monster Hunter friends are really into Legends Arceus which makes me really happy for them, but also tells me the game isn't quite up my alley, uh, which is totally fine. Different games appeal to different people. That's true. I didn't play, like, I did not play um, Brilliant Diamond, no, Shining Diamond, Brilliant Pearl. Um, the new Diamond and Pearl releases, because I had one look at that game and I was like, oh, this is a, like a beat for beat remake of an old Pokemon game. I don't want to play that, right? That seems terrible and obtuse and boring. So I'm just not going to do it, right? So I just didn't. You know, it's like a Pokemon release that I didn't get. And like, you know, it's like a, a main style Pokemon game that I didn't get, right? It's like I got when uh, Auras came out, right? Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire came out. I really wanted that game that was a generation that i was into it seemed like i had never played that game i've also never played uh, diamond and pearl but for some reason i was interested in that game and diamond and pearl i was not so it just didn't seem like the thing that i wanted um harvestry says uh so a fan of both franchises i am very into uh arceus yeah totally um Fenerbrae says i like pokemon legends arceus i did a lot of things right it was a fresh Pokemon experience, but it is not perfect. Graphically, Game Freak still has a lot to learn. Essentially, it is the Pokemon game I wanted for the N64 or GameCube, and it looks like it too. Uh, that's that's a thing that people have said. They're like, man, Pokemon Legends Arceus is the Pokemon game that we all wanted 10 years ago, right? It's like, boy, this game would have just evaporated off the shelves if it had come, up, come out like, you know, 5, 10 years ago. That's that's fair. That's fair to say. Uh, Harvester says, I had a similar reaction to Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, though it did look like it had an innovated... It didn't look like it had innovated much. I also didn't care for the graphical style they went with. I could have lived with the graphical style. I just, like... Again, it's like they show you walking around the town, and I'm like, oh, this is like a grid. It's like, 
this is very much going to like they're trying to make the exact same game over again as opposed to something like let's go which i played but didn't finish um because i kind of got bored of it um where they're doing the same game but they're changing up some stuff and definitely doing different cosmetic things to make the game sort of pop a little bit more um yeah uh, Horse Man says the future Pokemon games are as much of a departure from the mold as Legends. I'm super hyped, even if this one wasn't my favorite. I, I, and I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that way, but because I think that's the correct way to feel. Pokemon games are gonna keep changing, right? It's like, um, I don't know if you guys know J.M. Crofts. He's a he's primarily a fighting game guy. Um, I think that's his name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So he's a he's a fighting game streamer. He does Guilty Gear and he does Marvel versus Capcom stuff and whatever he wants, right? So I was watching a stream where he was playing, he was going in playing Pokemon Legends Arceus blind, right? So he's playing and he's playing and, you know, he catches something and all the Pokemon in his party get XP. And... He's like, oh, that's good. Everybody in the party gets XP. And somebody in the comments was like, ugh, the XP share. And somebody else was like, is there a way... Do you guys know if there's a way to turn the XP share off? And I'm like... This is a different game, guys. Like... You have to take this game as it presents itself. This is like... If you think about this as another Pokemon game, you're not going to like it, right? You're going to be like, how do I turn the XP share off? Like, where, like, how, how do I get past the, like, where are the gyms? I need to know, like, what gym badge level I'm at right now. You know, it's like, it's not. It's doing something else. And future Pokemon games might also just dump some of these structures. Um... And it's going to be different. Like, I'm not saying you have to like it, but it's like it's like when we started playing D&D 4th Edition, right? It's like this is literally in an episode of Critical Hit where, like, we're, like uh, Steven's talking about his magic missile power and Matthew's like, they changed magic missile? And I'm like, they changed everything, right? They changed everything. There is nothing about 4th Edition that is that can click with 3rd Edition. And nothing in 3rd edition that can click with 2nd edition, right? They changed so many fundamental things that it's now a different game. And it's like, you have to you have to know that with Pokemon Legends. You can not like that. Like, you can not like the game that it is and that it became. But, um, but, but it's going to be a different game. And you're going to enjoy it a lot more if you approach it as a different game. Uh, let's see. Uh, Harvester says Auras was an evolution Oop. <laughs> on the Source games that did that did a lot uh, that did a lot that I enjoyed. I think uh, HGSS uh, here's still my top remakes. Yeah, Hard Gold and Soul Silver. Okay, uh, Fender says BDSP was meant to be an almost one-to-one -one remake. Yeah, and it felt that way. Then I was like, I do not want to play an old ass like Game Boy Advance game. I just don't. I don't know if. Brother Diamond and Shining Pearl came out with a Game Boy Advance, but you know what I mean. Um, Horsepaw in mind, they went and unchanged it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how you have to approach... I think that's how we have to approach Pokemon games now. Um, you know, it's like... Sometimes the games are so different or they exist in a different space that people just accept it. Like Pokemon Go, right? People play Pokemon Go and they're not like, how do I do X, Y, and Z? Because the fact that you're playing it on your phone outside changes the context enough. But Arceus um, is too similar and exists in the same space as Sword and Shield. So people are like a lot of people are like having a lot of trouble like grokking like they're trying to twist this game into what it used to be into what these games used to be and it doesn't want to do that because it just is trying to do something else and 
again, you'll enjoy more future Pokemon games a lot more if you just say, okay, what is this game trying to do? And is it successful in doing that? And I think in the stuff that it's trying to do, Arceus is very successful. Uh, Harvester says, there are often previous editions slash versions, changes across games where at the time, the feature feels tedious or trying, but the removal or updating later uh, later on can be viewed as changing the core aspects of the originals. Absolutely. Uh, like I am so over the moon that HMs have been fundamentally removed and replaced. I changed for the better. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it, like Pokemon um, Sword and Shield. First Pokemon game to just allow you to access your boxes remotely. I mean, Let's Go might have done it first. Let's Go was before Sword and Shield, right? Um, but Sword and Shield, the first the main Pokemon game that allowed you to do that. And at first people were like, what? What? And But eventually people are like, oh yeah, this is a lot more convenient. Like, I can just continue my adventure instead of having to backtrack constantly to a Pokemon Center, right? Yeah. Um, Fenebrae says, it won't surprise me if after Gen 9 we'll get a Black 2, White 2 remake followed by a Pokemon Legends Reshiram. I hope not. Like, I just see these thumbnails and I just, like, have to, like, pinch my nose, right? Um, it's like, oh, what if, they, like, Pokemon Legends Zygarde, Pokemon Le Legends, like, whatever. And it's like, I hope not, right? If they make another game that's like Pokemon Legends Arceus, I hope it's called, like, Pokemon Legends Team Rocket, right? Or Pokemon Legends, like, uh... Pokemon Legends, that weird continent that Groudon made, you know, like Pokemon has this problem where every Pokemon game is just like is a, a very similar carbon copy to the last one. And I would hate for Arceus to change some stuff only to become the new normal, right? It's like, I hope that this tells them you need to change up your iterations instead of like, we came up with a new iteration. That's great. Let's just do this now. So, yeah. Uh, Harvester says reusable TMs in black and white too. Yep. Yep. Reusable and um, and you don't need to like go give somebody an item for them to make your Pokemon forget it, right? You can just write over them or whatever. Um, let's see. That's 336. Let's see if we can knock out Hop. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll wrap up, I think. Oh, it actually went into sleep mode because we talked for so long. Uh, Skippy says, so I'm going to say that while I don't think it was worth the, si the full $60, which is fair, I still say that this is a 6.5 to 7 out of 10 for me. It's just not the perfect 10 out of 10 I keep hearing. Uh, that's fair. Like... <laughs> you know, people sometimes when a game is like really enjoy. I mean, it's like Skyrim. Like a perfect example is Skyrim. Skyrim is buggy as hell, and it still is. And they keep releasing it buggy as hell, and people keep buying it because they love it. You know, and people are like, "Oh, Skyrim's the best," and I'm like, "It's really not, you guys. Like, it's really not." But there are aspects of Skyrim that people are like really into. Um, so, yeah, you're going to hear, you're going to keep hearing all those, like, five out of fives. Um, I was like, I don't think I would give it a five out of five, but I'm still playing it and still enjoying it, right? And now I have to freaking catch all these stupid legendary Pokemon that I hate. Um, because I generally tend to not like legendary Pokemon because I think their designs are dumb a lot of the time. But now I have to do that in Arceus. So maybe that's what finally breaks me and, like, makes me stop playing the game. It's like, uh, I have to fill out stupid, like, Heatran's P Pokedex page. Like, that seems extremely boring. But I think all the legendary Pokemon uh, pages go pretty fast. Anyway, let's kill Hop. Let's go. I think I spent too much of my formative years listening to a show about reviewing comics. That's your problem. That's the problem. Trevenant. Oh, a grass type. That's helpful. 
Oh, but it's a ghost type. That's bad for Oakley. Time to test exactly blah, 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 something, something. Let's go. Uh, let's hope for the initiative. Oh, that's going to be bad. I guess it wasn't that bad. That was a good attack hop. It's no shell sidearm. But it was pretty good. Actually, it's pretty similar. All right, Oakley. Time to use your ability to go first. Nope. It is kind of fun when you have two Pokemon that have super effective attacks against you. Actually, I guess... Shell Sidearm is not super effective against that Trivenant because Ghost types uh, resist poison. Uh, let's see. Uh, Horse Point Man says, I will also say that when I say I wish it was cheaper, it's part of my general wish that every video game was smaller, shorter, cheaper, and made by people who are uh, properly paid for their labor. I, I agree with that, yeah. Harvester says, I also haven't heard 10 out of 10 claims on uh, Legends Arceus personally, but also I know people hyped will do it. Um, what that happens for any installment though so maybe i'm less phased by it i mean that's fair uh skippy says i've become too mercenary in my reviewing i mean that's fair you review things the way that you feel go for it um harvester says triple a games cost and inflation are a whole other can of worms yeah definitely um oh yeah good job saint jw a hundred percent yeah uh skippy says I think if you couldn't save in front of the shinies in Pokemon Legends Arceus, I'd enjoy it a lot more. There's so much safe, there's so much of a safety net, and honestly, I think a lot of like a certain amount of that safety net wasn't isn't purposeful. It's just like the way the game's coded. Like sometimes a game's like um, what like sometimes a game's idiosyncratic code makes the game harder and sometimes it makes it easier right basically that whole like save in front of a shiny and you can like find it again from anywhere is an exploit as is like shiny switching right like if you find a shiny starly and then you leave and come back at night is like a shiny drift loon or something so that stuff um that's that's idiosyncrasies in the code that's not something that they necessarily are doing on purpose so yeah all right, let's finish this fight. Psych up. Uh, Hypnosize is only copying any stat change made by the target. Eh, I don't think so. Boltoned. Did I load up my ground? Yes, I did. Uh, Skippy says uh, it's a multi-million dollar industry hosting, posting shiny exploit videos for the new games at this point. It is. And that's what I'm talking about. It's like, again, it's like the Pokemon company isn't trying to make things Nuzlocke friendly or, or even shiny hunting friendly. I mean, it might be doing shiny hunting friendly because it knows that that's something that people care about or something that... Um, something that the average player will care about um so the decisions that game freak slash the pokemon company slash nintendo makes for these games will affect this like secondary group right it's like if they made shinies super hard it would affect these guys too right it would like actually change things um Harvester says, I enjoy the saving capability. It's way easier to F around and, and by mistake in this game and scare off a shiny. It is. And like, I constantly, I'm constantly just messing up, throwing empty Pokeballs at trees, um, throwing my <laughs> throwing my Pokemon into battles when I mean to, like, catch something. Um, you know, like, alerting an alpha of my presence by, like, hit hitting it with a bean cake. I'm just constantly doing stuff like that. So it is nice that it's a little bit more forgiving. Um, yeah, so I was floored when I noticed the shiny Tangela in the overworld and made dang sure to save. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's, uh, let's hit it with an earth power. K. 
Kabam. The way you battle, you know, it kind of reminds me of Lee. Oh, Hop. It's okay, Hop. It's not your fault. Cinderace. Yep, we'll keep it here. See if we can hit it with another Earth Power. Uh, Harvester says, also by now they have over 800 Pokemon, each with shiny forms. If they kept shiny rates as difficult as earlier games, it would be way more daunting for shiny collectors. Yeah, I mean, you could see it both ways, right? It's like... Um, I used to not do any shiny hunting because I was like, there's no way. Like, it's just too difficult and I'm not going to spend all this time doing it. Once they made it a little easier, I started doing it. You know, so now that it's very easy, now now that it's very easy, I kind of started not doing it again. Right. It's like there will be a mass. Uh, what are they called? Um, a hyper potion. Uh, like a mass outbreak of Pokemon or whatever it's called in, in Arceus. And I'll look at it and it's like, I don't know. Cherim or something, and I'm like, I don't want a shiny Cherim. I don't want a shiny uh, whatever Cheruby or whatever. Oh, it's like Cherubies, and I'm like, I don't want, need a shiny shiny Cheruby. I don't need a shiny Cherim. Um, I don't I don't need these Pokemon, right? So I just don't. Whereas I think if it was a if I, if it was a little bit harder to get shinies. I would I would go to all of those and maybe get some shinies and maybe use them to trade to someone else. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, in a way, I'm kind of with you on that. It's like now it's so easy that I'm just like eh, like now I'm only looking for the shinies I want, right? As opposed to before where I was like, oh, literally any shiny, but it's like yeah, you know, whatever. Um. Skippy says, I don't really run into shiny collectors at this point. Most shiny hunters I know are either doing it for the dopamine rush or have been doing it for a decade and it's just how they spend their free time. I mean, that's fair. Uh, Harvestry says, uh, which was something they programmed into the game and something that is hyped up. Yeah. Um, my playstyle for Pokemon games, says Skippy, uh, are to get a team of my favorite shinies as I progress through the game. So I can get the champion card with all the shiny Pokemon. That's the goal for me. Okay. I mean, that's... But but you see you see why there's an issue, right? Because you created this playstyle for yourself in other games. And um, the game has no reason. And the creators have no reason to maintain this playstyle, right? It's like... Um, like... Uh, yeah, it's like when I play Skyrim, I make a name and and I write a backstory for my character, right? So I tried to do that for Fallout, and you can't. Like, if you're a boy, your character used to be a soldier. If you're a lady, your character used to be a lawyer. That's part of their backstory, right? It's like, you can change that, but every once in a while, stuff will come up that points to that stuff again. So this playstyle that I created in Skyrim doesn't work in Fallout 4, which is a very similar game, right? So yeah, sometimes when you make a playstyle for yourself, that won't work anymore. Like you just can't do it. And, and because it's so personal, it'll often sour you on things. And like that's happened to me. Um, but you always have to keep in mind, anytime you go into a new game, um, and I'm not saying you didn't do this, Skippy. Um, but every time you go into a new game, you always have to ask, what does this game want from me? What does this game want me to do? What does this game think it's fun? I need to engage with that first and see if it is fun. And then after that, I can add my own, like, sprinkle or, like, pour in my own sauce into what I think is going to be more fun than that. Uh, yeah, let's get a fighting type out here. I don't think Ribbetina has really actually gotten to do very much. Uh, 
Skippy says, oh, sure, I didn't really care that I couldn't do that in uh, Pokemon Legends. It's getting steamrolled by wild Pokemon and not being cap able to throw over uh, most terrain because it clips into the path of the ball. Yeah, I mean, that does that is something that happens. Uh, let's... Ooh. Let's sucker punch him. Bam! Oh, no, no! Oh, that didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. Oh, this Snorlax is faster than me. That means that, like, potentially I can actually get... get a decent revenge off. Not that it matters. At this point, a regular revenge will take him out, but yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll, uh, if people are still playing Arceus, um, maybe I'll make a video later about my, uh, Bonafide, um, super sure way of catching alphas that has worked great for me, except when it doesn't work and I get my butt handed to me. Crud papers. Yay. How many Pokemon do you have? Uh, I guess like a sargassum back out there. Uh, our next stop for Drip is Sir Chester, so that's where we're heading now. Um, well, now we're probably going to... Well, actually, I, I think you get healed afterwards. So yeah, we're heading to Sir Chester, which is like the second to last place that has uh, a boutique. It's like Sir Chester, Sir Chester and then Winden. And that's... Uh, that's where the last boutique is. Or whatever they're called. Close shopping place. Ah, yeah. Poison? Ah, poison. Now I wish I had used double team and just let him die from poison. But we'll hit him with a dragon pulse. Uh, Horse Pond Mine says, I only get to play video games like 10 hours a week these days, so I'll for sure still be playing Legends by the time you make that video. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, so, oh, we're going to try and get together tomorrow, like, late night, right? Like, very early in the morning, as in, like, around midnight um, Pacific time uh, to play a little bit more Magic the Gathering. But after that... I, I'll probably switch back to uh, Legends Arceus. Uh, hey, Zal, just in time. Have, have you played with any of the Neon Dynasty cards? A little bit. A little bit. Not too much. I've been trying to put together a, uh, a reconfigure deck. It is not going well. Uh, before we ever started on this journey, I remember watching Lee on the telly. He was like a bright star, so strong I could hardly bear to look at him. But now I can tell just how strong he really is, and what he's got that I haven't. Aw, oh, hop. But I'm getting stronger too. Maybe not as fast as you, but fine, whatever. Thanks for letting me battle with you again, and here, I'll heal up your team for you too. Well, thanks, Hop. That's very decent of you. Hop's a good kid. He's got a good upbringing. Um, I want to beat him. I want to be the one who beats the unbeatable champion. And I'm going to. My mind's made up. You and me are going to have another battle once I get my gym badge in Sir Chester. Okay. All right, Hop. I'll be there. Uh, let's just go ahead and save here. Because it's time to wrap up the stream. Wrapping up the stream. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, Skippy says, I'm not sure I have the fortitude to wake up that early. Then do not. Like, do not p do not ever put yourself out on account of this channel. Like, if you want to donate, that's cool. If you can't, do not. If you want to 
make it to one of the streams and you can, then great. If you can't, do not put yourself out to watch these streams. They get recorded anyway. You can watch them later. Um, uh, let's see. I think Harvester says, I think it's been about a week since I last booted up Legends Arceus. Uh, when I think about it, uh, when I think about it, uh, School and Life said nah, but also I want to be mindful of burning out before I even finish the main plot line. I'm definitely not playing as much as I want to, just because work and health reasons and stuff, so um, yeah. I'm still playing a lot, but a, a lot for me, which is like, you know, maybe four hours a day. It, it's either like zero or four hours or maybe like two hours on, on any given day. But, like, playing for four consecutive hours is actually a lot for me. I usually can't do it. I'm just like, bleh. My eyes are, like, hurting. Um, uh, Zal says, yeah, I haven't played with them too much myself. Kind of want to make a frog historic brawl deck with a Toad Rider. I like that Toad Rider. I, I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, Sinjadu says, and I was about to go to bed, too. <laughs> uh, Skippy says, sword and shield, baby. Joe Cat was right. It is the best weapon. Nice. Harvester says, Oh, I love SNS. Um, I have a new respect for Gunlands, though. It bangs. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, Life's a Pitch gifted a tier one sub to Horsepawn Mine. Thank you. That is very kind of you. Yeah. Uh, uh, you guys are becoming a community. Uh, <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, all right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for uh, watching me just completely get derailed from the game and talking about a different game or scarcity or whatever, right? So hopefully you guys had a good time with that. Um, oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, anytime you guys need uh, RPG advice or whatever, just shout it out. Worst case scenario, I don't hear it or I don't read it and you just shout it out later. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah, that's right. Show off those emotes. Um, yeah, so we will catch you guys later. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Uh, and yeah, uh, if you can, uh, try to make it tomorrow night very late. There's always a possibility that I won't make it, right? Because I you know, have some health stuff and some other stuff. But uh, I'm going to try and do, do a late night stream tomorrow night. So, good night.